All right, welcome to another Paranormal Highway. We got a great battle for you today. We got the Aurora, Texas incident from 1890, where they're making claims that there's a UFO buried in the graveyard. Wow, against the UK Roswell story, the Renshian Forest incident in 1980. So what's the bigger story? Is it the dead alien in the graveyard? Or is it the UK's version of the Roswell? I don't know. But all I'm going to say is strap on. Get your belts ready. Get on. Because we are ready to take the paranormal highway. So while we play the intro, you go put in your vote in the poll on what you think the bigger story is. And if you want to change it after you see some videos, change it. You know, a great wise man has told me once, told me, the, a great wise man came from the heavens above. It's probably myself. Told me, you know what, Eric? Gypsy Road can't take me home. That's right. <laughs> two pictures what is the bigger story for you could be for any reasons could be the 1980 because it's more for people who are uh, maybe close to my age we know the 80s or the, knowing the fact that there's a dead amy is supposed to be in a graveyard in texas maybe that's the reason why it's the bigger story there's no right or wrong they're just what's your bigger story. And so far, let me look at the votes that we have going so far. All right. We got nine votes so far. And hopefully those votes come in. Hopefully those votes get higher. 50% says the Aurora, Texas of 1897 versus the uh, Russian Forest incident of 1980. Man. Again, I invited people from the UFO community to come on. But again, they're afraid. I don't know why. They don't want to hang out with me. I, they're afraid. There was actually one person. I was playing a little joke. I said I was Jeremy Corbell. So I want you to come on a show. And they, yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. And then I sent the email at the same time under my name. Uh, no, I'm not interested. Oh, so if I was Jeremy Corbell, you'd be interested? But because it's me, you're not? Ah, I'm better looking than Jeremy Corbell. I'm better looking. Yeah, that's right. I am. All right, everybody. Now, what is the Aurora, uh, Texas story? Well, I actually, got, I got I got two videos in a way. And, and the first video is a group that uh, says they were there. No, no, I'm sorry. Actually, I was messing that up with the other one. The, this this story is about the um, uh, the Aurora, Texas. Let's just listen to it. I, I was I was miss I was messing up with the uh, people are walking. That was for the UK Roswell story for them. So totally totally different video. Sorry. A local news reporter gave the story to the Dallas Morning News, and it's been in and out of print ever since. Jim Mars of the Fort Worth Star Telegram. Well, the newspaper clipping simply said that a cigar shaped object, brightly illuminated floated over uh, head in the early morning hours and crashed on the hillside. You guys did hear that, right? Cigar-shaped UFO. 
I know you hear that a lot here and there now, but cigar shape from 1897. So, so, so just kind of think about that. So, so these cigar shape UFOs have been happening for way over hundreds of years before we were even born, before we even took our first poop in our diaper. So, so the cigar shape is not new. I know some people say that, you know, the fifties were the, the round saucers, you know, each generation, the uh, saucers have different shapes. They say that, you know, but the cigarette shape, sir, 1897. Just, I'm sending it out. That's kind of interesting, right? Kind of interesting, in my opinion. And then in the story, it said the pilot of the craft, comma, which was not of this earth, comma, was given a Christian burial in Aurora Cemetery. But one resident of Aurora since... That's interesting right there alone. So the ship crashed. And they say that the alien inside was dead. And they got a Christian burial, right? Of all, of, of all type of burials, the, the Christians. I, and I listen, I got nothing against religion. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. But, you know, religion likes to hide anything outside of the, of the ordinary because they want everybody to, to believe the Christianity, the Bible and everything, not this UFO kind of stuff. But the burial, technically, was, supposed to, was Christianity. That's, I don't know. I don't know. To me, that's kind of that's interesting. 1920, Miss Etta Pegas, considered an expert on the town's history, disagrees. I never heard of the spaceman. I moved to Aurora in 1920, and not one word did anybody ever mention about it. However, an eyewitness, 86-year-old Charlie Steele. Just right off the bat, now somebody moved there in 1920. She's never heard of that story, and nobody ever mentioned it. So, is there some faults to that story? Is it a make-believe folklore? And, uh, you know, we, we got to take all sides. We got to take all sides. We, you know, it's kind of interesting, you know, in a way. She's a historian, and she's saying that. She could just saying that, you know, some some people, when some people get older, they get kind of cranky. They get kind of uh, uh, angry at the world and stuff, and they don't want people to believe in nonsense. So she could be uh, um, talking out of her ass, too. Just saying. Claims when he was seven in 1897, he saw the crash. We don't want to trouble you too much about this because we know you're not feeling too well. Because of the years of harassment, he refused to appear on camera, but he did agree to talk to us. Think you could tell me what you remember about the night that the light went over the house? There's been more people, more told about that, but I think it was my own eyes. It fell. Something fell there. Right? So we went up there and seen the spot where it burned. Some people think it's a hoax. But I want to ask you guys uh, a question. The people that are here right now, I want to ask you guys a question. Now, this person was eight years old when this, when this incident has happened. In your guys' opinion... Is there an age where you say, you know what, that's just a little bit too young. You don't know what you saw. Is there an age limit? You, you think that's possible? Like, can you believe an eight-year-old versus, I don't know, a 13-year-old, a 16-year-old, a 20-year-old? Is there a certain age when, you know, you, you're thinking, okay, he might, you know, maybe six or four or three. Is there that age limit? That when you're thinking that they didn't really see what they think they saw. Because, you know, I mean, listen, let's be honest. You're five or six years old. You see a light in the sky. It could be a regular plane. But to them, they don't know. You know, they think it's UFO. But is there that is there that age limit as a kid? Is there a cutoff? Karen wrote, uh, we can't believe an eight-year-old. And I'm thinking eight-year-old is... Most of uh, is the age that the good memory, you know, eight year old, you can start remembering things like, like when I had the Bigfoot encounter, I was 11. So 11 and eight, it's, it's hard to know, you know, because everybody matures also at different 
ages. You know, some kids mature faster than others. You know, I, I, I'm always curious when people hear stories that's from a little kid. Do they believe it or not? Or they say, oh, that kid's too young. It didn't really see it. So uh, let me see here. No limit. It's by the individual. Yeah, be, people people mature at different levels. I, can, I agree with that, Laura. We can't believe an eight an eight year old, and that's hey. Your opinion matters too. Everybody's opinion matters. That's that's the great thing about this channel. Everybody' opinions matter, you know. And listen, if you take a group of of ten eight year olds, each eight year old maturity level is going to be different. Some eight year olds have more imagination. Some eight year olds believe in more in evidence proof. So, so you know. It also depends on a person. Um, kids and animals sense and see things grown-ups uh, uh, don't. Plus, kids can remember more details that grown-ups don't. And I heard that too, and that's true too. Like I said, this is why this is why um, we're having this conversation because this is all important. Let's hear some more. Oh, hold on a second. Children are more innocent than adults and less likely to lie. And and you know what? That's that's true. And there are also kids who know they saw something and they're afraid to tell because they think they also are going to get in trouble. I mean, there's, you know, I, I like I said, I was lucky. I was in a, uh, my family was all believers. You know, they said, you know, they have experienced things in their lives. So I come from a family that are true believers. In prayer, it fell. It wouldn't be until the late 60s that the International UFO Bureau would uncover the story. Hayden Hughes, director of IUFOB. This is one of the controversial aspects of the incident. Were the news accounts at the time genuine? Tell me the truth. What do you think? Is there anything here? In 1973, when I came here first, there, there was at least a partial headstone here. I'll show you what I saw. There was only half of a tombstone, which went something like this. And on this was a very curious mark that went something like this. This was just a rock. I want to uh, say thank you, Exploring Harley, for being a member of the channel. I appreciate it. Your support helps the channel. It helps it keeps it going. And uh, I appreciate that. So it looks like in 1960s when the UFO community finally, like, recognize it now i don't know when exactly the true government ufo community that actually starts to you know they might have just opened up that organization because our somebody did tell me well eric how come it took to 1960 for this ufo organization to even start recognizing the aurora because well maybe in 1960s when they finally developed one they had enough people who believe in these stories that started researching you know, it, 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 you know, study groups have to start somewhere. It got, you know, it, so don't think about, well, 63 years later, now they're, you know, then they're really talking about it in groups. Well, that's maybe when the groups got started. So you can't just jump on the bad wagon saying, well, why it took so long? You know, maybe in the 50s, they didn't care to have these groups because people are still, uh, you got to remember, talking about UFOs, Bigfoot, paranormal. You know that nowadays people think you're crazy. They, they think you're crazy now. But think about that in the '60s. They really, truly still think you're crazy. They think you're crazy. You're even worse then. So multiply what people think of you now by three. So, all right, let's let's keep it going. Oh, uh, there's so many wonderful people that are here today. I so appreciate you all. I want to thank you guys for coming in today. Let's hear some more. And that had been hand uh, hewed and and uh, this had been chipped out of it with some kind of chisel or something but as you can see it's just a curious little object but i think we could see if there was the other half was on here we'd have what appeared to be a tombstone and if you brought this mark to this side you would have something like this which gives you a definite saucer shape what do you think this is i think it's just a piece of fiction yeah, it keeps wise county on the map that's all i can say <laughs> Keeping Wise County on the map is the reason Miss Etta and many others believe the spaceman's story was written. From what she told me, they gained... 
<laughs> you know, that's why it was written to, to uh, keep this town on the map, right? I don't know about that. I mean, uh, I mean, we are talking in this, you know, I mean, I mean, it wasn't like social media was there. It wasn't like you're guaranteed to put this uh, a story out and this town's going to take off everywhere. It's going to be the hottest story around the country. You know, it, you know, I don't know how fast stories travel, but, you know, back in those days, you know, it took newspapers, the ones to pick up these stories to run with it. You know, are they, are they, are, are newspapers going to send a reporter out to Aurora, Texas to investigate? So I, I can't, you know, I'm not saying she's wrong, but I don't know. Saying the story's made up just to put the, the town on the map. I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe. The 90s had not been kind to the little town of Aurora. They'd lost cotton to the boll weevil, half the business district in a fire, and hundreds of citizens to spotted fever. People left the town in droves. In those days, even a Martian wouldn't be caught dead in Aurora. First of all, let's just be honest. That 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 has happened to a lot of towns. Not not just Aurora, Texas. So many towns like that. So, you know, sometimes they make it like this town's just being destroyed. You know, that's that happens across the whole United States. And it's still happening that towns were once furnished and then they drop, you know, they, they die quickly. It happens all the time. Actually, it was the hottest story in the country back in back in they put it on the a telegraph and the story appears in over one thousand papers for the next day. It would be neat to be go be able to go back in time to actually travel to see, you know, you know if there was really a crash. But hey, we're here to learn about the story. We're here we're just here to hear the story to see is your pick for this the bigger story than the UK's Roswell story. The general consensus of opinion is that he uh, wrote this story to bring people back in into the uh, community. See, the, it, that spotted fever caused a veritable stampede out of the town. Well, we were not dealing just with one case. All over, people were reporting something, and one of these somethings appears to have crashed. The crash site... And that's important to say right there. Multiple reports. So not all these reports are coming from one person. So there are multiple, multiple reports. How many of those multiple reports, you know, he has in front of him? I, I, I don't know. But it's not just coming from one source. So if are they all lying? Are they all in on this? Possibly, possible. I mean, you know, nothing would shock me anymore. Today is owned by Mrs. Brawley Oates, who gets calls in the middle of the night and thousands of visitors at her door. Uh, there sure has been a lot of them here. <laughs> uh, the thing about it, they just press me for what's happened here, and I, if there's anything happened here, I don't know about it. See, so. my grandkids went out there with a screen, not one with screen doors, and. They sifted sand out there and they found little particles of metal. Lead looking metal, but it wasn't lead. Another clue leading. Family found some, you know, different kind of metal. You know, and then this, I'm not saying the family, this family, you know, the experts on metal, but they kind of know their land, right? They know what machinery they have had on their land. So when they get a piece of metal that's not from their own equipment, that would raise an eyebrow. Not saying it's a it's from a UFO crash, but if there is some rare metal that's not from their equipment, what is it? What is it? Yeah, I get it. Civil War times and stuff. I, may, maybe, but but they would know their own land. Oh, my brother Ron is in the house. Danny, my brother, in the house. Exploring Harley in the house. Guys, if you haven't seen the show on Friday, um, Harley and Danny 
And Dr. Wu was on Friday. It was a fantastic show. It really, truly was a fantastic show. If you guys haven't watched the one on Friday, please watch it. It was fantastic. I love it. Actually, there was one comment that I was laughing my ass off because somebody put in the comment on the Friday show. I thought I was going to watch the scary videos and I saw four hillbillies. Four hillbillies on the screen. Like, you know, four hill. No, 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 wasn't hillbillies. Four rednecks. Four rednecks. Like, it's like, you know, these four rednecks, you know, we got college, college, we're college graduates. I'm not saying that makes a person smart or not. Don't get me wrong, but. When you make comments like rednecks and stuff, it, 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 they, they make it like you're all dumb. He's like, no, we're, we're, we're more open-minded. We, we use our, our skills that we've learned through the years to study this stuff. So I love when people make st uh, stupid comments and they, the way they try to make fun of you, calling you rednecks, trailer trash, and, and it just makes me laugh. You know, I'm like, I wonder what they look like. To still more questions. I know one thing, you don't never die down. This dog with a gnome, it's just like a mushroom, but it just gets bigger and bigger and it just goes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know, right? Exploring Harley? You know, you're from Kent? Well, actually, why can't a Canadian be a redneck? <laughs> hey, that'd be a good country song, right? Why, why Canadian can't be a redneck? That, hey, my God. Somebody should write a country song. Why can't a Canadian be a redneck? I think that'll be a number one hit in both countries. Danny Stanton, you start writing the lyrics to Why Can't a Canadian Be a Redneck? I think that'll be an awesome country song. Further and further all over the world. One man who has tried to keep the story from spreading any further is the sheriff of Aurora. Armed with a shotgun, he spent 24 hours a day guarding the graves in the cemetery from treasure hunters and curiosity seekers. And in return, all he got was an ulcer. Were you the one that, oh, you're the guy. While I gassed up, we had a few words. Yeah, you were up here with a shotgun? Very few. Do a lot of the town people here believe that there's a UFO up here? A lot of them did, a lot of them did. It's fair. It's not fair, man. <laughs> that guy reminds me of uh, Be Belichick, the New England Patriots co uh, coach. That you can ask him the question, he might not give you an answer. He might just look at you like, "I'm not gonna answer you, bastards." You know, he reminds me of that person like, "Like you can ask me all I want, I ain't saying shit." <laughs> What do you think? Do you think they should get down there and dig it up and settle it once and for all? No. If we can find the exact grave and get the permission from the Aurora Cemetery Association to actually exhume bodies for evidence, that we could have the evidence of extraterrestrial visitation. Mr. Nobles, you represent the Aurora Cemetery Association. What's their... First of all, let me say this. Let me say this. Even in 1960, if they got permission to dig and look for the alien, it's already gone. It's already gone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If 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 an alien was buried in a crash, the government's already taking it. They're already taking it. If they believe that there could be 10% truth to that story. You ain't going to find no alien in that grave. You will not. It's already gone. It's already done. It's already done. I'm sorry. That's, that's just how I feel. Position in this matter. They have a, a very uh, uh, definite objection to anybody going down there with pick and shovel and wanting to dig a hole. Why? Well, they're afraid somebody will dig up grandma. <laughs> they are afraid, and I would be too, that there'd be a germ lurking there if they dug up somebody that died with that spotted fever and get the thing started again. Well, that's the story of the Aurora Spaceman. Part of the story lies buried here in the Aurora Cemetery. 
and the rest of the story is inside that house locked up in the mind of 86 year old Charlie Stevens all right now um, I'm gonna play one more video uh it's, it's a faster one it's about like a kid who moved into moved to the town and I, I was I was inspired not inspired but it was cool to hear how this kid heard the story and it's more about him investigating it himself, which I love that. I love it when people take stories upon themselves and they go out themselves to investigate a story. So one more video on this topic. Took it to Area 51 and I don't know. Aurora, Texas, Wise County, April 17th, 1897. I love that sound effect. Like Superman crashing the Kansas. An old West Cemetery that possibly holds one of the greatest unsolved mysteries in UFO history. That was one of the, uh, when we moved to Aurora, that was one of the first things that people said Aurora was known for, is the uh, alien invasion of 1890-something, I believe. I can't remember. Actually, when I was a uh, ninth grade student here at uh, Northwest High School, um, I did a report on that and tried to do some research and went around and talked to some people in the community and uh, there's people that swear there was an alien there and he is buried in the Aurora Cemetery and obviously I, I can't uh, I'm just I'm inspired to a point where he hears a story about the town he moved into instead of just sitting on it he went to he went to investigate it. he went to ask people around you know to and you know learning that people do believe in the story I mean I admire when people take the extra step, take the extra motivation to try to figure out the story themselves because we're all investigators. Every single one of us, all of you can investigate. You know, just going out there, taking that extra step, listen to the area. It's very important. So at the end, if this guy learned to believe the story or not, at least he went to research. I appreciate that. I love that. Confirm nor deny that, but uh, I, I know there's some people around that uh, say they witnessed it. They 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 swear that it happened. There was supposedly a uh, headstone uh, of the alien out there, and I know there's still to this day a historical marker, and um, it got stolen. And um, there's a bunch of conspiracy theories out there that the uh, FBI came and exhumed the body and took it to Area 51 and I don't know if any of that's true but uh, but it makes for pretty interesting talk around the uh, around the coffee table sometimes alright again he's just being honest that you know he doesn't know if it's true but at least he went out to investigate it, it what I'm trying to say is all of you could investigate it doesn't matter anybody can investigate you know so so far, let's check out the voting. Who's winning the fight? Who's winning the battle as we speak? So far, we got 26 votes. My God, we're half and half. The Aurora's 50% and the, the UK forest incident is 50%. We got ourselves a real battle. What is the bigger story? I freaking love it. Before we start the next video, I want to welcome Juan, uh, Juan Truth. He's been in, he's been with uh been watching my channel from the beginning. Since like night uh 1980. <laughs> there was no YouTube since uh like 2018. So Juan, I appreciate you being here. Zerg UFO, I appreciate you being here. World Bigfoot Radio, always love having you here. Exploring Harley, not just a friend. I consider him as a co-host because he comes on a lot of shows on, on, on Thursdays, the paranormal Thursdays. He comes on Fridays. Just such a great guy. Jojo is here. Uh, Cynthia Prince is here. Paranormal Pixie Laura, one of my favorite mediums out there. She's here. Thank you for being here. Uh, uh, Angel, Ron, my brother. I mean, this is so many great, fantastic people that are here, and I appreciate every single one of you. Um, I know I saw Amber earlier. I saw Roger Blair, uh, Dana B. Uh, thank you, guys. All right. So basically, that's the story 
of the roar of Texas. But what about this in the UK, the Rinnesham Forest Incident of 1980? So not 1897. This is 1980. Now, now in 1980, I was seven years old. And of course, seven years old, uh, you know, I don't even know we had a TV yet. <laughs> you know, nobody had cable TV, no internet. So a lot of these stories that even though they come out, none of us really hears about it unless we get lucky. It comes into our Kerman newspaper or the Fresno B, you know. So so we are going to – now, the first video is a, 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 a couple of Britain, British people making claims that they saw this UFO red light. Now, I, I'm not here to say that these people are real who saw this event. But, I mean, at least they're explaining on what happened. So if some of you are from the UK uh, saying some of these people are frauds, great. Let us know. Let us know. This is why we're here. We're here to share stories. We're here to share frauds and real. But but it's not really about frauds. It's about what's the bigger story. So however we get the story, even though these people might not be truthful, but at least we get to hear the story about it. So here we go. What's happening? And he came down. Bright red light, and it was small, and it, it was kind of blinking and uh, coming through the trees. Uh, yeah, we didn't know what the hell it was. So there we were, one night, back in 1980, there I was having a Christmas party. And some guys came running in, and they said, The lights are back. The, uh, the bushes were just as thick as this, and uh, through the little gaps here and there, you can see the, she looked like a little red eye. And it was blinking. It's been asked many times. Okay, yeah, that's we went and, back uh, to I can only come up with the same story and honestly tell you, I just don't know what it was. We could see the lighthouse. We knew, we knew it wasn't a lighthouse, and uh, these the, uh, orange lights, balls of lights, came down from the sky. And so, first of all, they're saying they saw these lights, the red lights, all these all these ships, and they know it wasn't. Um, um, what the fuck? I, God damn, I had one of those brain freeze. Oh my god, a tower. It wasn't a lighthouse. So it was a, what a lighthouse. I can't believe I'm having a brain freeze of a lighthouse. So they're making a claim that the light they saw is not from a lighthouse, which is important because that could be a question where is there lighthouses near? Are there houses near? So the county answered that question. So they saying that there was no way it was a lighthouse. Merged with other lights, and then suddenly there was an explosion. That night, a uh, cold, dark night, we saw lights in the sky and uh, oh, terrible, man. terrible. Uh, the UFO skidded up and down and it kind of, as it went along, it kind of bumped. And as you can see here, by about four foot, by about five foot, it turned to glass. It just turned to glass. So I got on to uh, Colonel uh, Charles Hawk uh, on the radio and uh, I thought of what was happening and he came down with a few guys and uh, Started recording a little, he's a tip recorder. Um, I just don't know what it was. One night, back in 1980, there I was having a Christmas party. And uh, through the little gaps here and there, you can see the, she looked like a little red eye. And it was blinking. Yeah, we didn't know what the hell it was. Uh, all right we got someone from the uk right here let's see what our friend from the uk said hi eric i live in the uk and was about 20 when this happened i was interested in the ufo had read uh chariots of gods never heard about the show until about two years ago after watching truth seekers okay truth seekers yes uh steve uh steve steve canby Steve Camby, he's a uh, Steve Camby is actually uh, uh, Steve Camby. If you didn't know um, Zorro UFO, he's actually a friend of the channel. He actually uh, voiced character one of my one of the characters in one of my cartoons of the Paranormal Highway cartoon. So he actually voiced uh, the soldier, the one where the we the one cartoon where we went back in time. 
who looked for the Holy Grail. He played the soldier that was uh, sent there to destroy us humans, to kill to kill all of us time travels, because only you know he's with the army. You know they had to uh, cover, which matches his character in real things. So, so hi Zong UFO. I was at Rimshit last week. Oh wow, Andy was there last week. That's cool. That's that's cool. That's awesome. Now, but are we ready for a little? Conspiracy. Yeah. I want to bring a little conspiracy on this one. A little conspiracy. Now, the conspiracy is going to have to deal with Ronald Reagan. Now, I'm just going to play real quick the famous Ronald Reagan speech about UFOs. It's real quick. Then I'm going to play the video where I think it's kind of a, con a, a conspiracy video. About that incident. So let's just play this famous Ronald Reagan speech. So you kind of get an idea of why a conspiracy, why is it a conspiracy? Well, or were there cover ups for this, this Roswell incident in the UK? In our obsession with antagonisms of the moment, we often forget how much unites all the members of humanity. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? What could be more alien to the universal aspirations of our peoples than war and the threat of war. All right. So we know Ronald Reagan did the famous speech where Ronald Reagan, I mean, you could take the speech on any different ways, one missiles to blow down other missiles or protect us from outer space. One of the reasons why well, I believe he truly did believe that we can be attacked by UFOs is, of course, George Bush Sr. was his vice president, the man who was in charge of the CIA, the one man who knows the 100% truth. Of course, he's dead in his grave, but knows everything that went on behind the scenes of the government. George Bush Sr. Now, I'm going to play this video. Gonna have You're going to have to listen to it. It's not very visual, but just just listen to this story because I believe there's a true conspiracy with this this uh, Renishum Forest incident in the UK. So truly, open your ears and listen to. It. And at towards the end of the video, I added in the real audio clip of a pilot who's talking about these red lights. So kick back, put your ears next to this. He's dead in the grave and in hell. <laughs> oh, hey, I'm not saying he deserved to go to heaven or hell. I'm just saying that he knows more what went on behind the scenes because, because let's be honest, he was really running the country even as vice president. Here we go. But we're not a political show. We're not, we're not here. Well, actually, when you talk about UFOs, I guess in a lot of ways you are political. At the outset of the 1980s, the Cold War had been in full swing for over 30 years, but was now entering a frightening new phase. The recent invasion of Afghanistan by Soviet forces had raised tensions between the world's superpowers, taking them to breaking point. It had also been a primary factor in the election of President Ronald Reagan who had campaigned on a platform which promised to take more direct action against the perceived warmongering of the Soviet Union. At the time of his election victory, Reagan viewed existing US foreign policy with open contempt. The incoming president believed that the detente which the two main powers had agreed upon was the main reason that the conflict had yet to be decidedly resolved. Oh. Wait, just wait. He was determined to break the will of his opponent by aggressively escalating the funding and deployment of America's armed forces. Reagan's strategy was bold and had been conceived around the central concept that the already failing Soviet economy 
would not be able to survive an arms race to match his planned increases in military investment. Its inevitable collapse would hopefully result in the country's population taking to the streets, revolting against their government, and forcing political change to take place across the USSR. We're about to get into it. Such an undertaking was music to the ears of British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, Margaret who held Thatcher. equally dismissive views of the policies and agreements that her predecessors had put in place. Thatcher was quick to offer her American counterpart carte blanche to move whatever military resources he deemed necessary across the Atlantic and into mainland Britain, in readiness for a future strike across the English Channel and onto the European continent. Afghanistan by Soviet forces oh, had shoot, shoot. God dang it. the views of the policies and agreements. The undertaking was music to the ears of British Prime Minister Sorry across the Atlantic. So 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 we're gonna be we're gonna be putting military equipment across around the world. So we're gonna be we're gonna be putting some of our equipment in the UK. So because in the in the uh, forest incident, it's the military people who recorded seeing red lights. So this is kind of telling you real quick on why we're supposedly we're there in the UK, because we're basically trying to sh trying to break the Russians, break them down. You know, we're more powerful, weaken their economy so they could collapse. That's the story so far. And into mainland Britain in readiness for a future strike across the English Channel and onto the European continent. In a move that was typical of President Reagan's wider military build-up, the 81st Tactical Fighter Wing was ordered to phase out its aging complement of F-4 Phantom fighter jets in order to make way for the arrival of the new ground attack A-10 Thunderbolt. Poised ready to counter any perceived Soviet incursions, its three sizable squadrons had been deployed across a variety of different European air bases, including two which were hidden away in the depths of the East Anglian countryside. Dotted across the sprawling county of Suffolk were countless tiny airfields, which had once played host to the Spitfires and Hurricanes that had vanquished Hitler's Luftwaffe. And it was two of these former World War II bases that the airmen of the 78th and 79th Tactical Fighter Squadrons now called home. Whilst half of their number were stationed at and guys, and like I said, I'm not I'm not making this a political show, but I do agree with Danny and, and, and Staten. Uh I was inspired by Reagan growing up. I everything he said inspiring me to be American. He did he inspire me. Whatever you political was that I kinda agree with Danny and um uh, we're old Bigfoot. We kinda really need that kind of a president who's just kind to the people, kind of kind. Doesn't matter what political party they belong to, somebody who's actually kind. I kind of miss that. But, but you're right, real big. The Bush Bush as vice president is another story. RAF Bentwaters. The remainder were housed at RAF Woodbridge, six miles to the south. Lying between the two American air bases were the 15 square kilometers of Rendlesham Forest, we go. Here a we mixture go. of coniferous connection, woodland connection. and low-lying wetlands. Now, as the dark and cold December of 1980 finally drew to a close around them, the American airmen and their commanding officers carried out their duties with no small degree of apprehension. They had little idea, however, that it was not just the Soviets they would need to be on their guard against. Farmer's Haas is over there. If you look at the bottom of the Haas, there's a big hedge row was not there. There's a row of windows top and a row of windows bottom. When the object went out into the field, we could see it reflecting off the windows top and bottom. 
In fact, so brightly I was concerned about the people in the farmhouse. I mean, it looked like it was on fire. So, America, Reagan, put our soldiers there. So the question is, were we there as what they're saying that, that to break Russia with all the Afghanistan going, or did Reagan put us there because they knew that we're going to be visited from outer space? Kind of like, in a lot of ways, like the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind. I mean, you heard live recording of a pilot seeing these lights. Now, I know there's a thousand stories of pilots seeing lights. I mean, goddamn, we just had a UFO hearing where two pilots saw these shapes. But in 1980, pilots did. You heard the recording. And at the end of that video, you heard that one of the pilots telling you what they saw. So, did Reagan put our military there on purpose and use the Russia as the reason why? I know it's a conspiracy. Think about that. If 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 you're the government and and and, and for however you hear that we're going to be visited anywhere around the world, we're going to be visited. They're going to have to find a reason to say why we're uh, sending military there around. They're not going to tell you, oh, American people, American people, we are sending our great young American soldiers because we've just been contacted by an alien life form and we're going to make first contact. They want to tell you that. They will make up a reason on why to bring the military there. The only place a UFO can land and not be near a U.S. That's true, too. That's true, too. Not saying that that's the reason. So I'm just saying. I'm not trying to bring up conspiracies here. But. Did the USA make <coughs> all that up about the Russians to put the military there because they knew we're about to be visited? World Bigfoot Radio wrote, they are joint military ops occurring uh, in South America right now. They're not going to tell you. They're not going to tell you if we're if somehow they got knowledge of we're going to be visited. They're not going to tell you the truth because there's people in the government believes that that kind of information will be destructive. People will stop going to work. The economy will break. And of course, if the economy breaks. People in power want to be in power. You know, the only way people can be in power if you have a working economy. So, you know, why would they take a chance? Why would they take a chance to tell people that there are visitors? Because for them to be in power, they got to be in a working economy. And there's a lot of people believe that once people knew that UFOs, aliens are real, that the economy will collapse because people ain't going to give a shit anymore. I think people are smarter than that, in my opinion, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying. The U.S. had a massive base near where I live in Barbary, Upper Hayford. It was like a small town with stopping mall, 100 houses, and bowling alleys. Oh, wow. That is, that is cool. That is cool. So let's take a look where we at with the um, voting now. Let's look at the voting. Let's see if it now. Now you heard stories of both. Now you don't have to. Now the conspiracy part I brought in. You don't have to. Uh, you don't have to conclude the 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 uh, the conspiracy part. You know, you don't have to. So let's look at the vote. What do we have right now? Let's check it out. So we got. Uh, 30 votes 
And my God, is dead even 50-50? Wow. 50-50. Uh, uh, <laughs> Eric is right. Aliens are here. What caused panic and panic will wreck the economy. And that's the thing. Listen, people could only be in power if there, if there's a working economy, if, if there's people to be, to have power over. If you don't have a working economy, it's zombie land. Everybody's free game for people to stay in power for corporations that have money. You gotta have a working economy, you know? And, the other day, guys, I was watching another channel. I think a lot of you um, know uh, Robert Earl White. And I was listening to Robert Earl White saying that he is now leaving the UFO community. Not, not, not that he's not going to talk about the UFO community, that he has left the UFO community because he just he's, he's like tired of of the uh, politics that's within the community. What it, what it means is, 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 is like this. Not all people, in the, not all in the UFO community, everybody in the UFO community says, you know, you can't believe the government, you know, it's all x files They're all liars and all that, which a lot of people in the Bigfoot community, paranormal community, we all know that. We all, we all know we're never going to get the truth from the government. And the UFO people say the same thing. But whenever there's hearings and stuff, they think the government is going to, but they think the truth is going to be coming from the government. They literally think that the truth is coming, that, that, that the government is going to release all this free information. They're going to tell you that aliens are real and stuff. They truly believe this. They'll say the government are liars, but they're, they, they, they listen to their TVs. They got their headphones on. Because they really, truly think the UFOs are going to come out. You know, they're, they're going to release the classified information. I'm going to tell you something else about these classified information. All these classified information were written by men and some women. These are written by, most of these classified information are written by government agencies, government workers. You know, and there's interviews and all that in these classified information with regular people. But these are controlled by them. So all because they come out and go release a few doesn't mean those classified information are even true because these are all written by men. I mean, listen, we we can all have different beliefs on, on religion. I'm not here to tell you religion is not real or not. That's up to you. But all Bibles, at the end of the day, were all written by men. Not by angels. Not by Jesus or God. God didn't write the Bible. The angels didn't write the Bible. They're all written by men. So all stories are could be naturally exaggerated. Now, all because you got to classify information, they're all still written by a person. People exaggerate. So if you're looking for the government for the truth, you're not going to get it. I wish people in the UFO community would get that. You're not going to get it. The truth is going to be coming from the people like right here in this chat. The truth will be coming from people like Flipside, World Bigfoot Radio. The truth will be coming from Mike Johnson, JoJo, Andy, Eric Freeman, Zoro UFO, Danny Statton, Andy. People like you are where the truth is going to come from. Not them. Not the government's. And we all get hooked on these classified. The word classified, it's like it's it's like a porn word. All these classified, every information is all written by man and some women. And I'm I'm sorry if I always keep saying ma'am, but we know a lot of the stories back in the 60s and 50s, you know, men trying to control everything. But now we live in a better world where women are getting more and more responsibility. So so man and women have written these files. So all because you even got to classify files, it doesn't mean it's real. It's all written by people. You got to listen to the blue collar people. You really got to dig down and find the right people. We are disclosure. That is so perfectly said. That is where the truth will be coming from. Right there.
Man, in the letters in the book of Revelation is supposed to be written by the apostles. That's what we're told. I mean, I, listen, I'm not, I'm not here to say who's written what, but a lot of things we're still guessing, we're still wondering, uh, you know. And you know, so what I'm saying is, what basically what I'm saying is, all because you're reading something government level of all level, it doesn't mean it, it's going to be true. You're going to have to research it on your own. You're going to have to find the people that you trust. I'm just saying, and and, I, and I, I see every single, I see so many UFO channels jump on the bad wagons where they think these herons are the greatest thing in the world. Then they start turning, they go, and it's like they still believe that the government is going to be telling them the truth. And it's like, when are you ever going to wake up? <laughs> Smell the coffee. The truth will come from within, not from them. Uh, okay, guys, uh, let me tell you. What's gonna uh, What's gonna be happening this week? I know I don't have um, links up this week. Um, tomorrow is usually uh, Bigfoot Tuesday, and I was gonna do a battle between the Bigfoot, the famous. The, oh my God, hold on a second. Oh shoot, I I, I hate when I have a, a brain freeze. I'm having a brain freeze. Sec. Give me a second. Give me a second. Do you guys hate that when you have these brain freezes? And, um, we're gonna have a uh uh. I'm gonna try to have a big Bigfoot battle of the most famous Bigfoot story above Creek. You know, Bigfoot above Creek. But I'm gonna have this famous uh, uh that story go against my story, our my UFO encounter, and and I'm right now I'm I'm making a a, a video trying to create like a visual of the encounter that I went through. And I actually did a, a voice recording with Danny Staten and my brother that I'm going to try to be putting in. I'm going to try to get this video done. So when I do this battle tomorrow, we're going to talk about the most famous Bigfoot story ever been told, you know, the, but the, you know, a buck Creek, you know, versus my story. And I'm going to try to get that visual done. If not, then I'll move Paranormal Thursday to Tuesday and have that ready for Thursday. I want to get that video done right. I want to get the recordings done right. So that'll be a fun battle. So I hope I hope it's good. And guys, I really, truly hope you enjoy today's battle. It's just fun. You know, now, what is my pick? What do I choose? I need to tell you guys what I pick. Do I think that Texas is the bigger story? Or do I think... The UK Renaissance Forest incident is the bigger story. And this is what I'm going to pick. I think the Renaissance Forest incident in the 1980 is the bigger story. I really truly think it's the bigger story. Because why was our military there? Ronald Reagan is a true believer in the UFOs. You just heard that famous speech that he did. There's something there. You work with the UK. I think, and I'm not trying to be a conspiracy theorist, but I think the whole thing with Russia could, could be somewhat true, why we did some certain things. But it gave us the excuse and the reason to bring our military there. I think, I truly believe in, in my heart that we knew, not, not an evasion, them showing themselves. I truly believe that. So for me, the Renishan Forest incident for me is the bigger story. Is the bigger story for me. But again, at the end of the show, uh, write it, uh, leave me a comment on who'd you pick and and put it why. Why do you? Why is the Aurora, Texas, the bigger story for you? Is it because? The alien supposed to be buried in the graveyard? If that's the bigger story, that's cool. Buck Creek is most famous Bigfoot encounter ever filmed. The Glass Saga is the number one Bigfoot story until easily edging out. You know, real Bigfoot radio, listen, Buff Creek is the biggest story ever. We know this. And when I was sitting there like, literally, literally, I was sitting there like, 
what story can I even attempt to pin against the world Bigfoot radio? I know we're on Bigfoot radio. Um, the Buff Creek, right? There's no story I could put up against it that's going to win. I'm like, I put my story up against it. And it's meant for fun. It's meant, listen, the bigger story is not necessarily about the bigger story. It's about an opportunity to have conversations about two stories. And for whatever reason, why those stories are bigger for you is up to you. So if I get that video done, tomorrow's Bigfoot Tuesday is going to be Buff Creek versus my story. Because I don't mind being crushed. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 you know what? There's gonna be one vote for my story. It'd probably be myself. It'd probably be for myself. But I know the majority of people are gonna pick, is gonna pick the Buff Creek story. But we know there's no story that's ever gonna be able to crush that. There's just not. There's just not. So, so, why not put my story up against it? You know, because I'm the underdog, right? I'm the underdog. Maybe maybe the underdog can get in and, 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 and get a get a get a punch, get a punch, you know, get an uppercut. Get an uppercut. <laughs> Man, I don't know. You guys have to come back tomorrow to find out. I will get the link up uh, at the end of today. And um again, I appreciate every single one of you for being here. At the end of the day, this is about just having fun. And it's about to bring up two stories that maybe some things of it you didn't hear. I know some people didn't never heard of the idea of a conspiracy that that I not come up with. I mean, I showed you the videos on why I believe it's a true conspiracy that the government knew that we're gonna be visited and we put we put military there on purpose. But that's up to you. That's the greatest part about this. The truth is up to you. Never be forced, never be forced, be forced into the to the truth. So again, when you're ready to investigate, get yourself, get in a car, turn that car on, get in that road. Because the because right around the corner could be the Bigfoot, could be UFOs, could be a ghost. So let's all travel together. Let's all hang on tight, keep our fingers crossed. Because we will find the truth next time on the Paranormal Highway.